in support of uh, Mr. Walcott, Deborah Godwin, who's here, Sandra Wicks, he's here, Eska Littlejohn, she's here. All right, uh, eight minutes, please. State your name and address. Uh, Kenneth Walcott, 638 Jefferson. Is that working? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'll preface this with, with one statement. This plan is not competitive. And I'll be back to tell you uh, within the next year, I'm sure, after all these officers leave and all these uh, firemen leave, and I'll be able to show you that that statement is true. I come to you today as a police officer and as, as one who wants to see this city succeed. We're in a crisis mode right now at this very moment, and I understand that you'd have to be an emergency responder to truly understand the gravity of it, but I'll lay it out for you the best I can. An overwhelming distrust has developed between the ranks of emergency services and the city government. I think the police would rather spend more of their time fighting crime than the city government. One can hardly blame the emergency responders um, <clears throat> for that because everyone in the city saw how the people who gave 25, 30, and even 35 years of their lives to these dangerous and just as important physically and mentally stressful jobs had the proverbial carpet jerked out from under them at the complete overhaul of the health insurance plans recently. I realize the city tried to say, hey, we didn't take it away. Instead of paying $350 a month for coverage, you'll just have to pay $1,675 a month. I think any simpleton can see that <clears throat> this is taken and this is taking the plan when a person gets no Social Security and is expected to benefit for 30 years and only may make slightly more than that with their pension payment. Then we set the stage for this, the uh, pension debacle. <clears throat> the City Council wisely, in my opinion, uh, hired, from all that I can see, a very capable and honest man, Eric Atwater of Siegel, who's an actuary to get what some describe as an unbiased funded liability number regarding our pension. I know the mayor's group, Pricewaterhouse, had come up with a figure, I think, if I recall correctly, it was around $789 million at one point. Uh, and I thought the whole point of raising the premiums and surcharges and, and, uh, and cutting people out of the insurance was to fill the pension gap and fix the pension. Uh, Inner Siegel, the city council hired for guidance. Siegel, in committee, when asked that most, he, he was asked if, if in public safety, most places were shifting away from uh, from pensions, and uh, one of the council members asked that, and uh, he advised, no, not really. Actually, eight out of ten of his clients were actually keeping the pensions, and they were tweaking it, and that surprised me as well. Uh, but when I looked up and, and saw that, I think most of the city council members were surprised. Pensions work. It's just they work when the math is done correctly. In 2008, the pension had surplus money in it. We've seen a, the a Dow of 6,000, and we've seen a Dow of 17,000, over 17,200 here recently. That's a great control group. I, I wish we had done the numbers based on, the, on, on such a low market and such a high market to get a more accurate number. I think that would be an excellent control group, which is one reason I think we should hold off on doing this and let Siegel do it that way. Um, I was surprised at that committee meeting that nobody actually asked Eric Atwater uh, what the what the funding percentage was at the, at the numbers they came up with. Now, well, there were several numbers. Of course, the mayor had his numbers, and then Eric Atwater had his numbers, which he stated, I believe, was $480 million. He said he would live and die by, and that in 10 years, everybody would see his numbers were correct. But in the interest of reaching an accord, he came up with $551 million to meet Price Waterhouse in the middle. I'm not sure that math is good at meeting in the middle if it's, it should be what it is. Um, as, as, as time transpired, uh, it, obviously the numbers were revised downward. And Siegel advised to me after the meeting, I asked him specifically, how, how, how healthy is this pension right now using those numbers? He said 83% funded. I said 83% and 80% considered the national line for being healthy. He said, I think it is healthy. I mean, I'd, li I'd rather see it at 85%, but he said, yeah, I think that's it's, it's, it's the healthiest or one of the healthiest pension plans that he said he had dealt with. And that's despite deficient payments by the city. Even, even despite that, he said it's one of the healthiest pension plans he's seen. I asked Mr. Atwater if he was a council member, would he vote to take out the under 10 employees out of the pension? He said, no, he would not because 
on a 40-year model, there was no significant financial impact for doing so, and therefore, there was really no reason to do it at all. Why are we hiring an expert that we're not listening to? I don't understand that. What, what does this all mean? It means we're losing droves of police and firemen, and the city seems to be acting if, as if losing huge amounts of experience and talent, as well as huge investments in training, is no big deal. And by the way, if city public safety was a, truly a city priority, maybe more of the city employees would live in the city. It is a big deal. Taxpayers are leaving in droves, not because of high taxes, but because they don't feel safe. I hear that all the time when I go to these scenes. I go to a scene and people are saying, this is the third time my house has been broken into in 12 months. I'm leaving. They didn't say anything about taxes. Police are leaving in droves and that's about to get worse. It's hard to hire the best talent or even anyone for that matter when they see that these other agencies have superior salaries and benefits. Not only that, many officers have left for the private sector for better wages and benefits. I never thought I would see a day when private jobs that have far more salary and advancement potential have normal hours and allow you to actually spend time with your family on holidays, subject one to far less risk of being spit on, sued constantly, or having absurd amounts of stress from criminals and unfortunately City Hall, fights and of course being killed. We, we have people that will do the job, that, but they need to be paid for the job they do. This is not like a cubicle job, it's just not a cubicle job. These other cities that are recruiting us know this. After these huge waves of officers leaving, we will have the youngest, most inexperienced police force we have had since I've been on in 12 years. This is at a time when police need to be more experienced and make the best, most solid decisions than, more so than ever before. I understand do more with less. We can do more with less with motivated officers. We need a career path. We need promotions. We have scores of police with 15 years on that are extremely competent and may never be promoted in their career. There's something gravely wrong with that. That deters people from applying here, just like this pension situation will. I say to you, to bring this one last thought, these current employees signed up for a job and agreed to compensation to do it. The city council needs to honor that agreement. The 7.5 year plan has been touted as a meeting in the middle, even though it is not even using the numbers brought to the city council by their own expert, but instead some arbitrary number that's been come up with. Meeting in the, in the middle is not always the best choice. If King Solomon in the Bible had truly met the women in front of him, claiming to be the mother of a baby in the middle, then you know what would have happened to that baby. And this is not a split the baby situation. This plan, in our opinion, is not wise, and I don't, I don't see how anybody can possibly view it as ethical. To break the promises that are years old and to hurt these families of police and firemen, people who protect this city, is just wrong. Let this be the first step in city council with working with boots on the ground officers to stop officers and taxpayers alike from leaving this great city. Thank you. Thank you.